Such a happy little tune. Yeah, we're I was going to say, just our heads it. away in <laughs> unison. <laughs> Thank, thanks for joining us, guys. Um, this is Full from Iron. This is our daily West Ham. Don't forget, drop a like on the screen, subscribe to the YouTube channel, and make sure you hit that bell icon to be notified of any new content as and when we upload it to the channel. I am joined on this particular episode by the one and the very only Titch from Hammers Fans United. How are you, sir? I'm very good. You just said um, drop a like on the scream. I'm sure you said scream. You know? Scream, streams, <laughs> whatever. Blah, I'm good. Blah. I'm good. Thanks, Katie. And oh, once good, again, mate. I'm happy to be on your show. Good, good. We're joined by Peter in the live chat. Hello, do, Pete, doing Peter. All good. So um, let's get straight into it, my friend. So the news is, let me just get rid of that particular banner for a moment and I'll go full screen and get rid of that one as well. So it was reported earlier today that Vladimir Tufel has now agreed to sign a three-year deal with West Ham. This particular piece is in The Athletic. Um, it goes on to say that he has penned a three-year deal with the club. There is an option for a further year. Um, it obviously makes the point that we signed him for $5.4 million from Slavia Prague last season. He obviously had a tremendous debut season in the Premier League. He helped to keep 10 clean sheets and was also, um, he had eight assists to his name as well. Unfortunately, he didn't get a goal, but there you go. Um, you know, and there was a lot of talk about the possibility that he wasn't happy, that he was unsettled, this, that and the other. But now he has finally put pen to paper. Titch, this is magnificent news, isn't it? It's great news. And, you know, obviously, like some of these things is, is not, new news but just looking at his price tag um it's ridiculous and eight assists i didn't realize it was that many mm. so that's you know like that's that's midfielder or, or, or winger type um figures so yeah and i'm i'm over the moon do you know the figures involved in his new contract compared to his old one Gates? i don't i don't um i've not got that information my my understanding was that he was on a, a contract before signing this new one that was about twenty-seven to thirty thousand pounds a week. Um, oh. My understanding is that he, well, when he came, my understanding is when he came from Slavia Prague, I think he was on about three grand or something stupid like that. Um, so, wow. in relative terms, his, his money got bumped up, you know, nine or ten times. But relative to a Premier League right back, I, th I mm. think you look at it and you go thirty grand a week. Wow, that's that's actually sort of pretty pretty meager Measly. portions when you're Measly. thinking yeah. about it you know and yet this is a guy that last season I, I don't know about you but he in my opinion last season he was our best player um he was it yeah he was definitely in, in the, the conversation three. yeah yeah, yeah. yeah no, definitely in the top three, definitely and i know that a lot of the pundits carragher and neville included they would possibly put him in their team of the season as a right back so mm. he was potentially like you know class as you know the best right back in the league so <laughs> Yeah. Um, so do you know what his new um, weekly income is? The new, the new wage? No, I don't. But I'd, I'd imagine it's, it's probably going to, it's got to have been bumped up probably to, I don't know, 60K, 45? 70K. Oh, you reckon 60? I, I reckon he's, I'm not being funny. I mean, you know, I think he could easily command that sort of money. Um, I, I, I don't know. That, that hasn't been publicised. It just says... This particular piece, he signed. He signed a new deal. As I say, it's he, he's basically committed. You know, the best years of his career to West Ham United. You know, he's twenty nine years of age now. He's he signed a deal that could potentially. It's at least three years, potentially four years. All things being equal, it doesn't say. I'm. I imagine it's the club that can activate the extra year. But I dare say there's probably clauses based on appearances and and various little clauses along those lines but you know for me i any any talk about sort of like you know the player being unsettled any any talk that you know it might unsettle other players within the camp sort of thing that there's a there's a player that that did was so pivotal to us last season and potentially it may well be that you know the rumor could go around that oh he's not being looked after by the club you know he's not he's not valued this that and the other that's now put to bed you know he's he's now he's put pen to paper so any talk that there's there's possibility of of certain murmurings within the dressing room that's now gone yeah um i think that i didn't know he was earning 
free K at Slavia Prague. Obviously, he's come to England. He's come to the Premier League where most players want to be. Yes, he might have, you know, got 10 times the amount he was getting. But you have to pay people what they're worth. Now, mm. I think he's definitely happy at West Ham. He's he's now got another Czech um, teammate in crowd there. Yep. Um, and whether he's on, let's say, I oh don't know, this has been hypothetical. Whether he's on 45 or 60K, um, it's a substantial uh, amount. Um, and compared to what he was getting maybe a season and a half ago at Slavia Prague, he has to be very, very happy at West Ham. And I think, like I said, the crowd signing, even more happy. Now, he might have looked at it and thought, you know, I'm only getting 27. And I say that, you know, only in today's sort of money. And, you know, rightly so, not being greedy and not, well, you came from three grand a week. He might be thinking, listen, like, you know, I don't know what Ryan Fredericks on, but Ryan Fredericks might be on 30K. And he'd be thinking, come on, I'm the first choice right back. Yeah. It's only right. And obviously your agent would step in and say, look, come on, man. Like, so, and the fee we paid for him kind of was peanuts. So I think whatever we're paying him, he's definitely earned it and he definitely deserves it. So I'm over the moon that that's been sorted because if you lose someone like that or you make someone like that unhappy, then West Ham is just taking steps backward when obviously we are trying to, you know, progress and, and take strides forward. So that him signing is a massive thing. It's, it's a big, big um, thing for West Ham. Yeah. What does that also potentially mean for the two guys that are basically his backup, Ryan Fredericks, who's actually in the last year of his contract, I believe, and young Ben Johnson, who I think had a, an, an excellent game at right back against Rapid Vienna, although I've had so, heard some people say they didn't think he was all that. Listen, pays your money, takes your choice. But does does this potentially have ramifications for those two? Um, I think that Fredericks probably knows the way Moyes plays, the way West Ham plays, that if he's going to be honest, he, he must know deep down that, that Soufal is better suited to us as a right back. But I feel now, and I wasn't Fredericks' biggest fan, I feel that there is a place in the team for, for Fredericks and, you know, horses for courses and certain games we might use him as a, in, a, in a back five or we might put him <laughs> on the wing. And, you know, he's sort of changed my thought process and I would hope that I don't know, we may well, you know, like when that's contract, we might renew it, you understand? But I mean, mm. even when Sufa is injured, Fredericks is not the best defender, but he does have that pace, you understand? So, uh, and as, as attacking player, sometimes you don't like playing against that raw pace. So he offers us something, but if he's smart enough, he would realise that, come on, like I'm understudy to uh, uh, an exceptional um, right back. So I don't think it should cause any, you know, disharmony within the camp. And in regards to um, Fredericks, I just think with Ben Johnson, I said this on, I think on West Ham Random, that for him to really, for us to see where he's going to go in his career at West Ham, I think we need injuries where he's forced to play and then he gets a run of games. Um, now, obviously, we don't want that. Yeah. So he's kind of in a catch-22 um, as to what type of player do we have on our hands. Do you understand? Because um, I don't think we're ever going to see him get a sustained run of games. And now that Sufa has signed that, I don't know whether the club are thinking, look, Fredericks will go and we have enough faith that he is our backup. I don't know. Do you understand? Um, and only time will tell. But at this minute in time, Gatesy, I don't think him signing a new contract changes anything that's already happening within the club and the right-back position. I don't think it changes anything. Do you think, though, that now that Vladimir Sufa has been tied up on a deal, does this now pave the way for other players who are there's question marks about their long-term futures in terms of their contracts and whatever. And I'm thinking principally um, his countryman, obviously Thomas Socek, and, and the big one being obviously Declan Rice, who is, it's, it's on record that he's already rejected two contract offers from the club, which he's completely entitled to do. Do you think that this sets out the stall of the club to say that we're prepared to negotiate and, you know, get our are key players tied up on, on long, long-term long deals? I Yeah, I think it does. I, I generally think it does. Just quickly on Declan Rice, we could sign, you know, X amount of players. I just think Destin, um, Declan Rice, it's inevitable that he will leave West Ham. So I don't think none of this is going to have any bearing on Declan Rice's decision. But the rest of the players, your Sucheks, your Fournals, your Ben Ramas, I think this will have a massive effect on them because... You know, like I said, he's he has to be highly rated. And as soon as you start, you know, messing around with these type of players and then and ultimately losing his players, 
then people start following suit. So I think it's it's massive for the future of, of nearly the rest of the squad and the ones that we want to keep. Like I said, the Four Nows, the Ben Ramas, the Sucheks. Um, so yeah, I think it's going to have a knock-on effect. Knock-on effect in a positive manner. And I think, like I said, Declan Rice, I just think that's a different sort of scenario altogether. Yeah. Yeah, I think with with Declan Rice, I, I'd love to be able to say he's going to see out his career with West Ham. I, I probably am kind of resigned to the fact, same as you, that, that he probably won't. And, you know, he, I think he's a once in a generation talent. I really do in his position, what he can do, his skill set. He's no longer just a, a basic defensive midfielder. He's now he is now the complete midfield player. Um, so I can completely understand that, that he's going to, attract certain clubs that operating on a different, a, a slightly higher plane to us. That's completely understandable. And I take it as a little bit of a backhanded compliment, if I'm being honest, because if Declan Rice wasn't that good a player that no one would really give a monkeys about him. Exactly. So, exactly. so um, I think just, sorry, Gatesy on that no, no. subject, when West Ham selling, and I said this, I think on this show before, as long as we get top dollar and as long as we reinvest that so that the players that come in, Mm-hmm. collectively are better than Rice. Obviously, if you get two, you know, world-class players, then that's that's better. Um, and then that would show the squad. All right, yeah, you know, like, we knew he was going to lose Rice, but at least the club have bought in, uh, you know, adequate replacements and keeping us on that progression forward. So, yeah, it, it depends on what they do with that Rice money as to how that would affect the squad. So... Yeah, we'll see. I mean, that's something that I, I kind of not dread, but I know it's coming, but I don't need to think about that because he's still our player. But when it happens, yep. they better just reinvest that money properly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Vladimir Tufau obviously signing a new deal, as I say, for me, that's a statement of intent. That's us saying we don't want, you know, we want to keep our best players. You know, we know that Vladimir Tufau played an absolutely pivotal role in getting us into Europe. You know, he was part of a defence, as it said, 10 clean sheets, in 38 Premier League matches, which, you know, for us is is actually pretty big and obviously translated to us being three points away from qualifying for the Champions League. We qualified for the Europa League and, you know, we, we're sort of like on the back of that. We're now two games into our European campaign and, and things are looking good. So obviously the club have made the move. They've, they've put the contract in front of him. They've agreed terms. And for me... I think this is absolutely brilliant news. I know that right back isn't a, a sexy position. It's not sort of like a, a goal scorer. It's not a winger or anything like that. But, you know, you need to have, as we've discussed when I did your one from each team and I said to you, you know, if you've got your foundations right, mm. if you've got your defence and your goalkeeper set, you know, and it's it's as watertight as you can reasonably get it, then, you know, and Vladimir Tufel, you know, last season, Absolutely fantastic. And look who's just joined us in the building, Mr. Peach. Um, how, how you doing, mate? Hope you are well. And he's just saying hello to Peter there. But um, Titch, Peach. final thoughts Final thoughts on Vladimir Tufel signing his long, long-term deal before we wrap it up. Great business. Um, it was uh, n- n- a necessity that we'd we done that. Um, I feel he's been rewarded for obvious um, contribution to to the club. And this signing is definitely a mark of intent. This signing, um, you know, it probably lets any Sharks swirling around know that West Ham is not, you know, we could have easily, you know, upset him, sold him for 30, 35 mil. And, you know, we got Fredericks and Ben Johnson. So the club are clearly, you know, they're sending out a message that we ain't selling our best players anymore. Do you understand? So... Um, a big statement by giving him a new to media stuff and you know back and forth. It was it was done swiftly, and we have to respect the board for 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 sorting it out like as as best they could and as quick as they could. So yeah, um, I'm over the moon because I yeah I, I really rate what he does and as a defender he he he's a, he's a very 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 good defender. So. Yeah, happy, 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 happy hammer. Happy days, always good. Peach, uh, Peach, um, Titch, before we wrap it up, please <coughs> feel free to give your um, your channel a, a plug. Okay, so Hammers Fans United, this is not the best of plugs. I don't really take it too serious. I don't really post very often, but I do, you know, put in time and effort with the graphics, the editing and the concept, like, you know, the thought and the ideas. But I would more so like to say... 
Can we hurry up and get Gatesy to 1,000? <laughs> and Duke, <laughs> quarter of mine, sorry. Get these guys to 1,000 uh, subscribers. Um, you know, check out my channel, whatever. But yeah, some seriously people, because there has to be people that watch these videos and haven't yet subscribed. If so, what are you doing? So make sure, full from iron, you man, subscribe and get into a thousand subscribers asap you yeah you are you are a perfect gentleman but guys please seriously as well please don't forget to give hammers fans united a subscribe the link will be in the description below on youtube and facebook so all you got to do is, is copy and paste that into your web browser click subscribe job done and uh, sit back and enjoy the fun and as always guys don't forget drop a like on the stream subscribe to the YouTube channels in question and don't forget to hit the bell icons on both channels to be notified of any new content as and when it is uploaded to the channel and we are going to end it there and we're going to do our usual sign out come on, come on you irons